Christmas has come early for the Babe Bus. The fridge is here, the sink is here, and the generator is here. Yes, generator, I'm not doing solar, and you can save me a passive aggressive email about how much I must hate nature. When I plug something in, I want it to work, and it has been cloudy for three months in North Carolina. So I, yes, I got a generator. Just save it. Let's focus on the fridge because if where are you going to go to the bathroom is one of the top questions you get asked when you tell people you're going to live out of a van. The second one is how are you going to eat? As though drive throughs don't exist. There are a lot of different models for portable fridges. They range from a hundred bucks to over a thousand. You can get lots of bells and whistles. You can get no bells and whistles, but I'm going to go through all the different pros and cons for what I looked at and tell you how I finally got to this model which saved me about $500 and hopefully will save you some money too. So let's start, just like we did with the toilet, um, let's start at the lowest, cheapest, simplest end which is just to get a cooler. So if you get a cooler, then obviously you have to fill the damn thing up with ice every single day. And since it's just me, I do not want to be tipping over a cooler and drying it out getting new ice almost every day, and you can't really control the temperature inside a cooler. So I'm gonna say hard no on a cooler. The next option up would be what's called a thermoelectric cooler, and these are really easy plug and play, and they're only like 100 bucks or so. You just plug it right into the 12 volt, um, you know, that cigarette lighter in your car, and there you have it. But they're kind of known for not keeping your food super cold for very long periods of time, and they're not the most energy efficient. So since I intend to be out for quite a while, that didn't really seem like a reliable option. And if I'm gonna spend 100 bucks or any bucks, I wanna make sure that I'm making the best investment on the front end. A step above that are your 12 volt refrigerators. And on van conversion blogs and videos, you will see a whole host of options. They come in all different brand names. There's Dometic, there's Whitener, uh, ARB, plenty to choose from. They come in different sizes and these have quite a range of bells and whistles and they are very expensive. And I can think of a lot of things I would like to do with $800 and none of them were buying a refrigerator. So I looked at all the bells and whistles, all right? Some of them have Wi-Fi technology where you can, from far away on an app, control the temperature of your refrigerator from your phone. That sounds really cool, but do I actually need that? I mean, how many times have I been on a hike and been like, you know what, I'm gonna bring down the fridge two degrees and I have to do it right now. Never, I've never been at work and been like, I really wanna know how cold the freezer is right now. Never. The only time you give a damn about your fridge or freezer temperature is when we have a hurricane and you've got other things to worry about. So it didn't seem like it was worth paying extra money for that feature. And there are some other features that are worth it. They have battery protection, and that's great because you don't want your fridge to drain your battery. But, you know, memory control settings where, you know, it has a computer that memorizes the different settings for temperature that you want, and I, I don't know, it just, it just seems like really extra. I'm trying to save every penny I can because I have a lot to buy. So I stopped looking at those models and started to look for something that maybe wasn't as cool and on all the blogs, but still did the same job. And that's how I got to this beauty. This is what's called a truck fridge and the old brand name is Indleby. A lot of these companies get bought, rebranded, but truck fridge, Indleby, kind of the same thing. I decided that the most important feature that my van refrigerator had to have was reliability. So I went to the source who cares an awful lot about reliability and that is truck drivers. So in Wilmington, North Carolina, we have a very substantial um, truck driving community because we are a port city. And so I asked them about what they used in their rigs when they had to go long distances. And this was the brand that came up the most. Now these boys do not give a shit about all the fancy schmancy Wi-Fi and all that other stuff. They don't care. They just want something that works because when you're a truck driver, the only time you're getting paid is when you are making mileage, not when you're sitting around. So they need something that can keep them on the road for long amounts of time. So I went to the truck fridge website. You can't find it on Amazon. They don't sell at other sites. You really got to go to that company. And this was $499 plus $50 uh, in shipping. $499, so $550 bucks 
out the door versus $800, $900. Now, it is not gonna come with Wi-Fi and USB ports, but I really, I just don't think I need that. I am not that fancy. The big downside of the truck fridge is that it does use more energy as compared to your Dometics or ARBs. I sent the spec sheet to the electrician who is doing the uh, electric work on the van, which still hasn't been done yet, we'll get to that. Um, but he told me that it wasn't gonna be a problem based on what we were doing, and he better be right because I will come for his ass. So I'm gonna open this baby up. I, I'm not going to plug it into the van because the van's electric hasn't been done yet, so this is not gonna be a true test of my truck fridge but I'm told that it can go from van or truck to house with ease because it has, I think, two different plugs in it. Um, we'll see, but I'm gonna open her up and I'm gonna plug her in and see how she cools and hope to God that this will be one more thing that I can scratch off my babe bus to-do list. So let's see what she looks like. First observation is that this thing is not light. It's about 45 pounds, which isn't technically heavy, but when you're my size, anything above 10 is a struggle. Got it out of the box, had to slide it out of the box because I couldn't lift the damn thing out of the box. The temperature controls are up on top, which is really great so that you're not having to mess around with them at the bottom, which I know some other models have. There's an Eco Max button, a Max button, and I understand that those are for whether you're trying to run it on low energy because you're going to be away from a while, or the Max button if you need to cool everything down really quick. Up and down controls for your temperature, and then at the bottom, there are power connections. So open her up. And inside, you know, it is kind of depressingly small, but um, that's what you're working with if you're in a van. Inside the fridge, there's a little cardboard box, and when you open that baby up, you will find a set of handles and two different plugs. One of them is the three-prong plug that we're used to seeing in a home, and then the other one is a plug for your cigarette lighter. So in your van conversion, you got two options. She is plugged in and cooling down nicely. Um, if you can't hear the noise she's making, it's because it's a super, super low hum, uh, which I'm pretty surprised about because a lot of the reviews for these fridges said that they, the compressor was noisy and irritating and, I mean, you have to be like hugging her to actually hear the sound. At this point, I could have a lovely discussion about how I'm going to store my bamboo milk and organic, free-range, emotionally matured yak yogurt in here. You know, I'm an American, and so I'm mostly gonna use this thing to cool my Coke Zeros and snacks and not make a big deal about cooking on the road because hopefully I will be out having fun and not chopping up organic onions on my flexible cutting board. So I'm going to crack these open and fill her up and see how many cans she can hold because this is gonna be essential while I'm on the road and then I'll time how long it takes for them to be cool and hopefully there will be no issues and I will have a cold Coke Zero in not much time. An hour later, she is still humming along, and let's see how cold the Coke Zeros are. Yeah, they're getting there. They're not icy cold, but it's been an hour. If I put Coke Zeros in my big girl fridge, they'd not be cold in an hour. So uh, I'm gonna let this work overnight and see how she does in the morning, and uh, I will post an update video probably once it's in the van. Uh, if it's a total wash, I'll certainly let you know sooner and I'll send it back and get something else. But for basically half the cost of those fancy schmancy models, if the truck fridge works for the trucking community, and we damn well know those boys don't put up with any crap, if they bought something that didn't work for them, God knows they'd be on their radios and talking about it at truck stops and that company would be out of business. So if it's good enough for the trucking community, good enough for me. But before you go, we need to have this week's edition of unsolicited advice from YouTube. Now last week we did swearing and I think it was pretty clear that 
bad words come out of my mouth and I'm sorry if it hurts your fragile constitution, but that's just how I talk and that's how I'm gonna keep talking. So we all got over that one, right? Well, this week, I got more than I was expecting um, some private messages that I need to work on my appearance for my YouTube videos. Like I need to put more effort into this. And if I did, you know, like do my hair and wear a bunch of makeup and maybe push my boobs up or show them at all, that more people would watch my videos and how much better for me that would be. That sounds awful as far as I'm concerned, but I did go on YouTube and watch some videos of how pretty girls do their YouTube videos to get some ideas, you know, because like, I wanna make sure I'm doing this right. And here's what I learned. I learned the most from the makeup tutorial videos where women who are super pretty learn how to draw their nose on in different sizes and color in cheekbones, and they are stunning. So. The first thing that they do, which maybe I could do to make this easier for other people to watch me, is they turn up the light so much that it blasts out the imperfections that Jesus gave them. So if I do this, you know, maybe it's, I don't, all right, that's enough of that. The next thing they do is they take their really expensive makeup products, which I don't own a lot of makeup because I don't care, but they make sure that they turn the label out and then they wave it in front of the camera so you can see just how expensive their makeup is and also what you can buy so you can look like them. Well, I don't have any of that because I buy whatever little bit of makeup I have from Walmart and it's basically Crayola crayons and a chapstick. So, um, but what I do have is I have tools and like I have more power tools than handbags. So, so let's see. So the way they did it was they, yeah, like that and they show it off and yeah, so there you go. That's how the pretty girls on YouTube do this. <laughs> and then the last thing that people who put a lot of effort into how they look on YouTube do is that they slow down their video and they bat their big fake eyelashes and make self-indulgent duck face lips to the camera to show off all the work that they just did because they put an effort into how they look and which I give them a lot of credit for it because I don't have any time for it. But they, so they do this and then they bat their eyelashes really slowly so you can see their eye makeup and it looks like they're about to nod out from a heroin overdose, but it's very sexy. So I'm not gonna do any of that because I don't care and I don't like war paint and I have a lot to do that doesn't involve this hair. So, Appreciate the feedback, probably not gonna happen here, but y'all have been great with the comments, unsolicited or solicited, thank you so much for watching. I have got to get in the van and move the plywood around for tomorrow, but it would be super helpful to know what video you wanna see next. Um, I'm excited for all you have messaged me and said that you're also building a van. Stoked for you, it's gonna be worth the work. Jesus, I hope so. I will see you next week.